right. Also, actually, I reposted yesterday because I looked at it and liked it so much, and he's such an interesting guy. An interview I did with Richard Dawkins, uh, Professor Richard Dawkins, one of the world's, well, I'd just say leading rationalists, human, uh, humanists, whatever you want to call them. Some say the world's leading atheist. He is a man who believes in scientific theory, and he came out here and... Uh, he said some pretty pointed things about the ridiculousness of Māori mumbo-jumbo um, being incorporated into teaching at our universities, which he pretty clearly said was totally unscientific. But you don't make a statement like that in New Zealand without having some wokester, some pearl clutcher come at you. Now, joining me now is the man who moderated Richard Dawkins' uh, speaking tour of New Zealand and... Uh, look, I'd like to meet you, you to meet him a, a bit more. His name's Michael Goldwater. Michael, what are you? Are you a citizen journalist? Are you um, you're involved in music and silly musical instruments? So, what are you? I'm an ex music teacher. You're an ex music teacher, okay? And I happen to have a podcast which I accidentally started about two years ago. ago. All right, and I want to have a look at that. I just haven't had time yet because I like I. I I've seen some snippets, and I'm quite interested in sharing it on the platform. But, Michael, first of all, how did you end up? How did you end up uh, moderating um, or introducing Richard Dawkins? That's a bit of an honour, to be honest. It was an incredible honour. Um, I did something um, quite simple. I emailed him. Yeah, good on you. Yeah. Good on you. And what did your email say? It said, can I, can I interview you for half an hour online? Yeah, yeah, and, and, he and then, yes, he and then I get a call um, the Monday before the gig saying we want you to moderate and interview Jolly Richard good. for both things. Um, and, and I couldn't get down the Sunday in Wellington. I had been fly fishing and I just sort of got caught up on the road with a couple of things. So I was disappointed I missed it. I had talked to him before. His, and, and really the message was consistent. He said, you guys are crazy if you think incorporating... The Maori idea of science into science is a logical or sensible thing to do. He's also stood with the listener seven, with the academics who said that was silly and put themselves, uh, you know, in conflict with an increasingly woke and, to be honest, critical race theory driven um, Royal New Zealand society. Um, and he comes and he basically repeats and emphasises that stuff to New Zealand audiences, which is important. What was the mainstream or the legacy media blowback on that or reaction to that, Michael? Almost zero. Mm. So I think as far as I can see, there's been one article in the Herald mm. um, and um, I'm sure we'll talk about that. But uh, can I pick you up, Sean, on mm. something you said before? He did not say it was Ma Māori mumbo-jumbo. Mm. So what we're talking about is a, a body of knowledge called Mataranga Māori, yeah. which, uh, you know... It's, oh, come it's, on, it's, come on, no. I paraphrased. I yeah, paraphrased. I know, but, it, I know, but we, we've got to be... We, we've got no, to, no, 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 we no, don't. No, we, no, we, ha, no, we do have to be there. clear with our language. Say mumbo, mumbo jumbo is my paraphrase. Yeah. He said it wasn't scientific. Yes, but he didn't right. He didn't use those words, and I think, you know... Mumbo it's, jumbo it's is a common parlance term for yeah. something that is not scientific. Yeah. And slightly... Bunk him. I just want to. I okay. want to note that. Okay, he didn't say it, yeah. but I, I paraphrased him yeah. saying that, and you agree that it's not a bad paraphrasing. Uh, well, I, I think the the thing is the the body of knowledge is is a, a really diverse set of knowledge yeah. from practical things through to cultural aspects yeah. through to s uh, spiritual aspects. But it's now not the science. Pro the problem is, um, and I don't think. Uh, or very few New Zealanders know this, yeah. they're going to put non-scientific information mm. in the science curriculum, yeah. uh, this concept called Māori, mm. um, M-A-U-R-I, yeah. which is basically uh, a concept of the life force. So that, yeah. that concept embodies the idea that in every thing, whether it's a rock or a pencil or a glass, there is a life force. Now, um, well, there is. There's atomic energy, isn't it? Isn't there? Well, no. There's no life force. There's no. That's. It's something called vitalism. Yeah. Right. Which has been discredited by the science scientific community yeah. multiple times, and most cultures have a concept of vitalism, 
which is yeah. a sort of I- I- embodied life force within everything. It's like Star Wars, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, yeah, well, yeah. The force be with you, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like Star Wars. Ooh. It's just, it's just not scientific. Yeah. And the problem is, the current government has instantiated that into the curriculum. I can read out what. what yeah, you, do so. Do yeah. So. Well, it might take me a moment to find it, but anyway, yeah. go on. Okay. Um, so yours. So he was essentially saying, and, and okay, that's a far more nuanced, <laughs> detailed explanation than Maori mumbo jumbo. Yeah. Um, forgive me, painting with a broad brush. Okay. How has that been? So in our, this is in our tertiary curriculum. Yeah. This Maori uh, concept is now literally part of the syllabus. It's in in the chemistry, um, in the chemistry and biology syllabus. Yeah. It basically says, and I'll, I'll paraphrase, things like, you know, um, research the, the Māori in this river or research the Māori in the taia, which is the uh, word And Māori is a completely made up, like, Star Wars concept of the force. Well, essentially, yeah. Like, it's, it's a vitalistic um, uh, concept. So, so every, it, is, it, is, it, is not, it is not science. Every person doing a science degree in New Zealand mm. is now being told... And I'll paraphrase again. Yeah. To study Star Wars. <laughs> well, the 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 what I did at the event, at the Auckland event, I read out the section in the curriculum, which included the the term Maori, mm. and then I reread it and replaced the, the term Holy Spirit. Yeah. To show you that is actually not uh, it's not appropriate in the science yeah. classroom. And to be clear, yeah. You know, Richard is, um, you know, he said. Yes, we should teach Mataranga Māori, yeah. but not in the science, science classroom. Curriculum. And, yeah. that's, and that's an important delineation. That's an important sort of nuance in this. Okay, so you say he's now, he used to be, and I can remember interviewing him, gosh, 12, 15 years ago when I was at uh, Red Radio and I was doing the arts festival or the writers festivals around the country. I'm not invited anymore <laughs> for some strange reason. Um and he was like he was like top billing, and I can remember interviewing. I think I did a panel session with him and George Bombio, um, which was pretty heady for the times. Um, but he was kind of shunned this time, wasn't he? Largely. Well, he wasn't shunned um, by the people who went to his events. I mean, yeah. they, they were they're pretty well full, yeah. and they weren't cheap tickets. And yeah. what was interesting, I, to my surprise. Um, I asked the audience, do they know about this issue? Yeah. And everyone put their hand up. Yeah. And not only that, I got the sense from the room that they were um, genuinely concerned that mm. this non-scientific um, concepts are going into the science curriculum. Mm. Mm. I, and he thinks it's madness or, or it's just not not sustainable to do this yeah. and it's not scientific to do yes. this. Yes. Well, you don't teach yeah. non-science in the science Science okay. classroom. It's a category error. You yeah. don't don't have the rug, rugby practice in in the English classroom. Yeah. And you don't you know you don't have the science um, the science lesson in yeah. home economics or whatever. Yeah, you don't teach. Yeah, uh, that's right. You don't teach woodwork in English lit. Do you? No, <laughs> no. All right. Uh, the Herald came out though and had a crack. Who in the Herald had a crack? The now? Herald. Let me just get get this um, woman's name, which I. Look, I can't actually remember. Yeah. Um, you, you may Annalise, be, you may, Annalise. That's right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, that was, the, is, as I said, that's the only um, piece that I've seen. And, and again, we're talking, uh, I mean, if he's not the most famous scientist in the world, he's mm. one of the most famous scientists. He's an incredibly influential person. Mm. Um, you know, he's a great thinker of his time. Yeah, I would agree. Right. So one would suspect, and, and also... We only, all we're talking about is the education of mm. all young New Zealanders, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's actually a vaguely important um, mm. topic. So there was one um, article in the Herald, which, to be honest, if I can be frank, essentially a hit piece on Oh, they, the Herald Dawkins. do that, they do that all the yeah. time. They literally hunt people down. I think David Fisher is hunting down Chantel Baker at the moment. Right. So they will trawl through people's social media accounts and ring people up who know them and say, have you got anything bad to say about right. that person? So, yeah, yeah, I think that job's fair enough. Yeah. So, uh, I, I wouldn't call it journalism. Mm. Um, or or, or, it, or if, if it is journalism, it's in the lowest standard one yep. could possibly find. Um, I actually just, in preparation for this, I went and um, 
found a little study from AUT, mm. which said, I'll read it here, in, in, research in, in a research NZ survey, 35% of people trusted... Um, 35 who, yeah, sorry, 35% trusted people in government and only 23% trusted journalists. Yeah. So my concern is the, and what I want to talk about, is the state of our discourse. Yeah. So we have a very important subject, again, to reiterate. Yeah. It's only, you know, we're only talking about um, the education of the young. Mm. Um, and a journalist like, uh, well, an article like that really doesn't do anything to add to the, the quality of the discourse, nor does it add to building the trust of mm. the, the mainstream media. Yeah, yeah, but that is so evident. Uh, and, you know, one of the reasons the platform exists, the public distrust of our mainstream media is so huge and largely because it has had to um, take money from the government with huge strings attached around the very things that you've talked about, right. around acceptance of certain principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, and you don't get the government funding to subsidise your journalistic operation unless you sign an agreement that you'll do that. And if you break that agreement, they can take the money back off you. Right. You know, forever. Well, you know, his history shows there's always a dominant narrative. Yeah. I mean, you know, 500 years ago, if, mm. if you and I got up and said the Pope was um, yeah. a, a fraud, yeah. um, you know, it would happen to us. Yeah. So the dominant narrative now is is to follow, um, how can I put it nicely? Or, or sh should I say th th there's there's a, a a disregard of of things reasonable. Mm. And if you go against that narrative, it is very dangerous. Mm. I have had people, when I first started, because on my podcast, mm. can I do a plug for my podcast? Yeah, you can. The well, I'm, 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 well, I want to talk to you about getting your podcast on yeah, the yeah, platform. Okay. Yeah. okay, it's called The Shape of Dialogue. Yeah. And I started the podcast, um, the first um, conversation I had with it was with a philosopher called um, Kyle Gibson yeah. about this whole, whole subject. And I'd like, can I read something? Um, yes, as long as it's not too long and boring. Oh, it's really boring. But I won't be boring. Is it? How long? Okay. Is it? Oh, oh, no, oh, go for it. Go no, for no, it. No, 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 no. We've got time. That's no, no, why no, I, but no. Their formats loosen it's, up. It's actually quite. If beautiful. you're boring, I'll just snore out loud. Okay, Come good. On. It says he said we need to protect the quality of our discourse, and that means when people are putting forward good faith arguments and not using those arguments as political dog whistles or weapons to attack a group or do something harmful, we need to protect them, even if we don't agree. Because when we protect someone who's putting forward a well-reasoned argument, we're not protecting the idea they are sharing; we are protecting the discourse itself. Yeah, and that's now, you know, yeah, and that's that's why I'm doing yeah. why I'm here. Yeah. Uh, look, another thing then on the science, uh, and we've run the story for the last week. Mainstream media haven't picked it up, um, and it's called a cause and effect story in many, many ways on many levels. So we have Cyclone Gabriel preceded by an extreme uh, rain event. And we then have a narrative that this is caused by climate change. Now, the fact is there is no scientific evidence to support that these Cyclone Gabriel or these other weather events, firstly, are anything out of the normal. And in fact, we find that NIWA does not and has not recorded in its database, and NIWA being, for mainstream media, the font of all information mm -hmm. on New Zealand weather. Um, and a journalist called Ian Wishart goes back and he looks at news stories referring to barometric pressure. And he just takes 20 years from 1860 to 1880. And he says, gosh, there were lots of Gabriel-type events in that 20 years. And the database is completely in, uh, incorrect that Nee was quoting, Gabriel, indeed Bola, are not out of the norm, if anything, our, our, our weather in the recorded history that we can access, and they still use the same bar barometers today that they did back then, is actually dropping off a little bit. So then we have, we must do something about climate change and people march in the streets and say we've got to be carbon zero, all based on a fallacy. But to question Nima, Niwa, to question what is now almost the religious orthodoxy of man-made climate change, 
Well, we have a mainstream media and stuff that won't even discuss it. It says there is no debate. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, first of all, I'm going to shock you. I'm not a meteorologist yeah, or, yeah, no, or no, a cli- no, climate... Neither am I. Yeah, yeah, climate scientist. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not going to comment on what's happening with the climate and all that sort of stuff. I'm here to comment on this article and what... And the state oh, of this I thought discourse. you were here to comment because you said you wanted to talk about discourse yeah, and people but, but who are exploring what, what, unpopular what, ideas what, what I would and whether or not... No, no, let me finish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And whether or not we should tolerate them. Yes. And well, I give you an example of someone, Ian yeah. Wishart, perhaps even the platform, exploring yeah. the possibility that the common orthodoxy might be wrong. Well, what I was going to finish with was, is, is in a sense, to concur with you. Mm. Again, my concern is it has is, is now become heretical to go against the dominant narrative. Mm. And again, you know, one of my favourite, you know, lines is the more things change, the more they stay the same. Mm. So if I, I, we... T- you know, look back at, again, you and I calling the Pope an idiot mm. 500 years ago, yeah. we would be burned to the Watch stake. Watch yourself there, Jimmy. Y- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, um, you know, we are now, we run the risk, or people run the risk of being burnt at the digital stake mm. now. Oh, yeah, and now, they are. And, and if I can get back to the article, um, one of the things that concerned me about it Mm. Was this is the Herald, the Herald of, of Richard Dawkins. Of Richard Dawkins. First, first of all, if you, if you look it up, the photograph of Richard mm. is, um, really reflects the fact that they were not concerned with um, accuracy or balance. Yeah. Um, or so fairness. it makes him look slightly mad. It, it just it makes him look like he's apologising. Yeah. Right? You know, again, we can take a photograph of anyone any time, no matter how great they are, and, look, and make them look like a fool. Um, so that I thought that was interesting. It wasn't. It wasn't. It didn't show any uh, uh, sort of respect. Anyway, then they they had a little brief outline of what Richard said, and then they um, quoted a a researcher, um, who, you know, of Maori, Maori descent. Yeah. And um, all she did was accuse Richard of you know the heinous crime of being a racist. Now. That but is, that's almost the pro forma response. It, it, oh, you're a racist it or is you're a misogynist. Forma. Yeah. It is pro forma. But the fact that um, they chose that person mm. to comment. On my podcast, I had a, a fantastic discussion, one of the best discussions I've had with um, a gentleman called Charles Royal, mm. who is New Zealand's preeminent scholar on Mataranga Māori. Mm. I mean, he's been studying it for 30 years. Yeah. And he... Uh, I would implore everyone to go and listen to that. Yeah. Uh, because I re- re-listened to it last night, and he's just such a great guy. He reasons so well. And what's and, his and argument? He, and he, and he, you know, he at the end of our conversation, he did preface it that he wasn't sort of up to speed on exactly what's going on, but he he expressed a concern as well. Yeah. So the the a con- concern about what a, a concern about non-science. Yeah. M- non-scientific Māori concepts being in the science classroom. All right, let's talk at another issue about science and non-science. How many sexes are there? Because <laughs> um, here's another one that yeah. you can be burnt at the stake by the woke left news media yeah. and the trolls on social media over. Well, genetically, mm. and I quote Richard yeah. Dawkins here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. There are two. Yeah. And that's it. We've got a chief science advisor in in New Zealand who doesn't hold to that view. Are you aware of that? I am aware of that. That's crazy. I would agree with you. So how do we change this? I I I love Richard Dawkins because, once again, and see, I'm a populist. I communicate on a different level than Richard. And that is, and I often talk about on the show, the emperor has no clothes. That's But, geez, it's hard to call it out, you know. Uh, on my notes, it starts and it says, the emperor has no clothes. Both, yeah. So, I mean, uh, in that story, just to reiterate it for, the, for, yeah. for, the, for your listeners, in that story, the emperor is riding around thinking he's got clothes on, yeah. um, but he hasn't. And no one points it out, yeah. right? And it takes a little child to point it out. Yeah. And as soon as the, the child says, the emperor has no clothes, everyone starts laughing. laughing yeah. Now, going back to... The problem is no one's laughing. I think I feel like the child sometimes. Yeah. You probably feel like the child sometimes. I think Richard Dawkins feels like the child. Yes. So I'm saying, the emperor has no clothes, all this woke rubbish. 
uh, all this non-science, there's more than two sexes, etc., etc. The problem is that it's taking longer than I would have expected for the crowd to start laughing. It'll take as long as it takes. Um, I'm going to quote Ayan, Her Ayan Hersey Ali when yeah. she was asked a similar question and she said... Who's Ayan Hersey Ali so for those I who don't know? Ayan Hersey Ali is the most incredible woman in the world. Um, she Angelina is... Jo she Angelina Jolie? <laughs> <laughs> what does she do? Is she a philosopher? She, a she is. She's a thinker. So she had. A, had, had a, she's. She's Muslim. Yeah. And basically, she came from. I mean, she's been. You know, had um, genital genital mutilation done to oh, her. Okay, right. And she comes from Somalia, I think. Just her, and and was okay. you know you know right. I mean horrendous. And you know. what did she say? And anyway, she's she she's in, one of the most intelligent people in the world. Anyway, she was asked a similar question: How do you how do you fight this? And she just said one word: yeah. fact, facts. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I have great faith in m that most people are rational. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We all suffer from irrationality. You know, you mm. and I included. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And there are times in history when ir very irrational things happen. Yeah. But the beautiful thing about a democracy is we can course correct. Yeah. We, 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 can, we can fix our errors. And that's why the ability to be able to speak freely in, in a discourse where, again, to quote Kyle, when we're speaking reasonably, yeah. it's important that even if you don't agree with it, you let people speak. You don't go to, oh, he's a racist. Yeah. You know, but he's a that, breeding, he's a that. We are breeding through the millennials and youngers, young, younger through our universities, through our education system. We are breeding people who are creating a population, population who are utterly unresilient and intolerant of different ideas. Well, I'm going to quote you from a Sumerian text 5,000 years ago. One yeah. of the earliest texts that we have on clay tablets says, the youth of today are useless, they're lazy, they're good for nothing. I never said they were lazy no. or useless or good for nothing. I'm just know. saying they're woke as yes. all hell. I think, but every general, and I think Socrates said the same thing. Yeah, that's so, what he did. So we, 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 we're all, um, you know, the, 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 the generation before us always seems weaker. But... What we have to do is we have to persuade. Yeah. And the other thing is most people don't go to university. Yeah. So most people are not um, enamoured with yeah. these concepts. And look, I, I think so, this is... So there is yeah. great hope. And this is what the platform is about. I, I figure a lot of people are out of step with this. They're sitting there scratching their heads saying this is, well, to, to be frank, bullshit. But they don't have anywhere to say that or share that idea because our media, our mainstream and legacy media are so wrapped up and have all been to university and have all drunk the Kool-Aid, right? Yeah. That's yeah, the problem. They, and our alt media tends to be, and there's an example of it, this rabbit hole radio that's popped up this week, the Voices for Freedom are funding. Mm. They tend to be extremist, foxy and just as bad on the other side. Yeah, well, in a, in a way, the, both sides feed each other. Yeah. They sort of have a symbiotic relationship. Yeah. They, they need each other to exist. And this is why I suppose, you know, okay, you know, I picked you up on, on how you describe, you know, the, what's yeah. going in. Because I think we need to speak in, in yeah. very considered, reasoned... Yeah. Well, I think know. we need to have the conversation and conversations are, are bumpy, but we can disagree and we're smiling at each other and we're enjoying and the discourse. Absolutely. And we're allowed to bump around. That's yeah. how conversation and progress works. There's nothing more I like than someone disagreeing with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. As, as long as they're, we're having a good faith argument, as yeah, soon yeah. as they think, think I'm, you know, X, Y, Z, yeah. then there's actually no conversation. Yeah, that's right. A and, you know, you can't argue with idiots because they um, drag you down to their level and beat you on experience, don't they? Um, <laughs> I get that quite a bit. Look, I've really enjoyed talking to you enough. We've kind of gone off subject. Can I promise you I ain't going to look at your podcast? I would like, because I like the way you're talking about ideas and you're going to do it differently than we've got. To, I'd like to get, to give you an outlet through the platform so that more people can look at your stuff and do that and we'll have a talk about it. I can't do it today because we're super busy, but we've already talked. So nice meeting you and so nice having you... Uh, in the studio, and also so so nice that you played a part in Dawkins coming here. Um, uh, to my mind, he's still in fashion for the thinking person, isn't he? 
What I love about Richard, he calls a spade a spade. Spade, yeah, or indeed a shovel. Um, thank you uh, very much indeed. That is Michael Goldwater, I'd say fellow traveller and friend of the platform now, really.